University funding from fossil fuels slows switch to green energy. It's all capital, man. From Russia financing far-right YouTube channels to the Young Turks getting bought out to mass media to universities. Evil people offer you money and things get worse. How can you be a liberal in this environment when the systemic claim is so objectively true, you know? Oh, it's not capitalism that's at fault here. It's just there are 57,000 individual massive world-ending problems we're suffering from right now, and all of them are caused by the exact same problem, which is wealthy people make money off of doing a bad thing and don't want you to stop them from doing the bad thing, so they use your money to influence you to keep them from not stopping them from doing the bad thing. How do you see this happen all the time everywhere and not get like a, oh, it might be the bourgeoisie? kind of vibe? Like, hmm, I wonder if there's a systemic character to this, maybe a kind of conflict between the classes. I wonder if history might be, I don't know, shaped by the conflict between members of these different classes, or a kind of historical material influence, one might say. I don't, like, how do you... Yeah, no, all these individual problems that have, the, like, the exact same character to them are disconnected from a central system that that kind of guides these problems, you know? What do you say to the argument that even in a socialist society where markets exist, so market socialism, large co-ops would still do these things? The argument then would be, rather than evil things being done that only benefit a very small group of people, the bourgeoisie, right, the owners, you would instead have massive, decentralized, transparent, and democratic processes, uh, which would significantly decrease the likelihood of any, like, uh, improprieties along that line. Like, let me put it this way, okay? Right now, there are probably a few dozen billionaires in America that have an ungodly amount of power in swaying the interests of both political parties towards things like uh, fossil fuels, you know, um, anti-democratic political uh, reform, uh, certain foreign interests, right? There's a lot of stuff you can tie them to. How would you do that with, like, cooperatives? How would you have that happen if there were no bourgeoisie? but rather large cooperative. Would you have like, hey, every, all 30,000 members of this worker co-op, vote if you want to uh, dedicate a portion of our corporate funds towards uh, buying out universities and making them falsify studies on the effect of climate change. How do you do that, right? It turns out that most of these problems aren't just caused by money, they're caused by extreme disproportionate investment in very small groups of people because it's kind of difficult to run that gamut otherwise. Force feed them red pills? Why? Who would do that? There's no single person who benefits from that corruption. Like, like think, think about it logically, right? It's not just a corporation does a bad thing, it's a corporation which is run autocratically from on high has a very tiny group of people at the very top, the shareholders, the CEO, whatever, who have money and power and act subterriously in order to covertly influence other institutions in order to serve their own interests. But in this case, you have to do all of that, except they're not serving their own interests. They're serving the interests of a massive cooperative subterriously. Like, stealthily? Am I misusing that? I might be misusing that. This is up there actually in my head. That means stealthily. Whatever. You get the point. Okay? Contextually determine what I'm saying. Demure. Shiftless. Ameliorate. Surreptitiously! Surreptitiously! Like, syrup. That's right. Subterriciously, surreptitiously. Okay. Very demure. Very demure. Thank you. You do so by telling them that reducing operational costs will increase the firm's revenue to the petite bourgeois worker owners. What are you talking about? Petite bourgeois worker owners? Working at a worker cooperative doesn't make you petite bourgeois. That's not what petite bourgeois mean means. Petite bourgeois means you own a small business. Also, how exactly would you do that logically? Like company pamphlets from on high where they're like, hey, everyone, don't worry. Dumping chemicals into the river isn't going to pollute your drinking water. Like, I know you all live here and everything, but... There would be no on high, though. Yeah, I'm not saying corruption can't happen. It's just like the way in which corruption happens is so obviously a product of class distinction. You know, it's not just corporations. It's not just wealth. It's that there's a very small group of people on top and a lot of people down here who suffer when they benefit. It's not, it's not just like company back and forth, you know? Also, how would different worker cooperatives work together? The bourgeoisie have a shared interest in their class. Why would different managing structures of different corporations work together if their only shared interest was what? What's their shared interest? It's not wealth. They're not wealthy, you know? Anyway, I don't want to give the impression that I think this would solve all issues. I'm only saying I think it's a critical 
a critical improvement. All 30,000 members of a co-op vote to lower their wages to spend money on fossil fuel lobbying. I, I mean, not literally impossible. I just don't think you'd get the same outcomes as we do now. Again, this is a class analysis thing, right? It's not just market economy, you know? A lot of these problems that we see crop up time and time again, it's not just people having money or people having interests. It's a different group of people. And here's a question. Here's something to chew on. Here's something to get your noggins jogging, okay? Let's say, for example, let's, let's take, for example, the fact that fossil fuel corporations use their money to lobby the government and spread misinformation about climate change. They lobby politicians, they buy off politicians, they buy off universities, they falsify studies, they do a lot of stuff, okay? Now, as we know, this behavior that they engage in, their strategy for doing so, their reasons for doing so, aren't like public knowledge. Like the fact that they lobby is public knowledge, but generally speaking, uh, oil companies aren't screaming from the rooftops, hey, we are buying fake studies from this university. We are paying off your politician. Like, they don't normally, this isn't something that they normally broadcast, right? So why then, since workers at fossil fuel companies definitely benefit from those fossil fuel companies staying in business, why don't they let the underlings in on the game, right? If it's not a product of class distinction, but rather just of corporate interest, why aren't they saying to all their low-level workers, hey, you who works at the oil rigs in Alaska, hey, you who works at the refinement plant, hey, you who works at the power, um, or the, uh, the, you know, the power station, everyone in on this. We all benefit from fossil fuel continuing to be used, so let's all get involved in it, you know? Yeah, we're, we're doing crimes over here. Want to join? They don't. They don't do that. They lie to their own workers, too. Oh my god! But Vosh, you're not doing class uh, analysis, you're doing idealism. Comrade Sophia, I'm not gonna pretend to entertain your criticisms of market socialism when A, you've been here since day one, this is a long hashed out topic, and B, you already misused petite bourgeois, okay? I know, I know, I get it. Market socialism isn't the ideal end goal. It's just objectively preferable to what we have now. The elimination of the bourgeoisie is a necessary prerequis prerequisite before we can do anything. What's that? She called you an idealist. It's a communist insult. You're devastated right now. You're the one who is misusing petite bourgeois. You called worker cooperative workers petite bourgeois. Come on. I know, I know. You're the world's best anarchist. Thank you. We've done this. We've done this. We've fought this. We've been down this road. Thank you for admitting I'm a better anarchist than you, Vosh. I mean, in the sense that your political values guarantee permanent ineffectiveness, yeah. Which is why I don't call myself an anarchist, even though I align with their criticisms of Marx in some cases, you know. The audacity. I mean, you can't deny that sometimes with a very particular kind of Twitter anarchist, you kind of get like a real example of the Contra screenshot. They don't want power, they want to critique power, that thing. I'm just saying, it's been known to happen, but I know that being more ideologically pure is the primary driver for these people, which is why I wisely said that Sophia is a better anarchist than me. You know, that's like the, that's like the carrot and the stick, right? Oh yeah, you've been so effective, Vosh, in pushing Biden left, Lamau. How can you be a participant in this community for like five years, comrade Sophia, and still misrepresent my position so aggressively. It doesn't speak well to your intelligence or your interest in engaging in good faith. Not that I should even be talking to someone who would so aggressively misuse petit bourgeois, calling me an idealist. <laughs> From a f anarchist? Saying I'm stinky while bathing in the ocean of piss and shit? I see you down there. Idealist. From a group of people who have nothing but ideas. Yeah, Biden pushed left so hard that he uh, left the race. He he actually uh, he got pushed left so hard by Pelosi that he he abandoned the establishment entirely. Biden said, "Actually, entryism doesn't work. I'm giving it up," and he left. We only got in the most pro-union candidate in modern history. I mean, my only argument is that it would have been worse if Trump had won in 2020, but all you need to be a good leftist online is the endlessly critiquing power screenshot and the firebomb of Walmart screenshot. Yeah, it is true that those are really effective most of the time because that's all most online lefties want to do. That being said, a lot of liberals will also misapply those two and just use them against anyone who ever does any critiquing, which is like, they should be applied to anti-electoralists or people who actively reject any bid for influence because it would, like, delegitimize them. The people who attack AOC 
for her complicity in the system. Perfect example, right? But then you've got liberals who are like, um, you know, some lefty will be like, uh, man, I, I can't believe we have to work until we die. I don't I don't want to be working at 83 years old. And then they'll get quote tweeted by someone with a globe emoji in their name with uh, they don't want power. Lefties don't want money. They want to critique money. <laughs> Good video on the nuances of the definition of proletariat for your own time by Zoe Paker. But I don't care. Two hour video! Yeah, I don't, I don't believe in this. I've only gotten smarter since I stopped engaging with uh, theory or people who talk about it. Two hours? Listen, a proletariat is when somebody, uh, is when you like them and they've got a flat cap. And bourgeoisie is when someone's got a top hat. I don't understand why people have to make this so f complicated. I've never understood why it's called market socialism when the state in this context would be planning like half the economy. Well, nothing that I described involved government planning. I was just talking about worker cooperatives. I do also believe in decommodification of many industries, ideally, eventually, basically all of them. But a mixed economy is still capitalistic. If you're up to your ankles and shit, you're still kind of covered in shit, right? 18 trillion pages of theory written and for what? How many communist countries are there? How many anarchist countries are there? How many anarchist states have you built? None? All right. But if, if you want to critique anarchists for getting nothing done, okay, then, you know, the grand poobahs of never getting anything done would definitely be the Marxist-Leninists. How many people dead and how many revolutions and how much communism built? Nothing. That's crazy. I mean, fuck, at least the anarchists only invested, like, Twitter shitposting. Imagine having an actual army and still not building socialism. Ridiculous. Democracy took a long time to get off the ground as well, to be fair. Yeah, but Soviet-style socialism is a downgrade to liberal democracy. Is shitposting a marketable skill? I mean, it's in the ballpark for me, right? 100% of MLs stop right before achieving criminal- Yeah, 100% of Marxist-Leninists stop uh, executing political dissidents uh, right before achieving total global communism.